Hello and welcome to Cards by Kendra. Today I'm excited to be a part of a birthday celebration hop. We're celebrating a couple of our fellow crafters November birthdays. Debbie with Debbie J's Crafting Corner and Nia with Crescent Creations have teamed up to put together today's hop, showcasing lots of birthday themed projects to inspire you to create some of your own to share with your friends and family. We hope you'll find each project as inspiring as the next. At the top of the description box, you'll find a link to the next person in the lineup. I hope you take the time to watch all hop videos because we love your comments and thumbs up. If you aren't already a subscriber, I hope you'll consider subscribing and click on that little bell so you won't miss any of my uploads. There are some amazing prizes to be won for hopping along with us today, so be sure to stay tuned to find out how to enter to win. For my project, I'm using the In Blooms bundle from Concord and Ninth. It has this large floral stamp set that has a big stamp at the bottom plus a couple of the same flowers separately, along with some leaves and some small sentiments, plus this matching die set here, along with four different stencils. It has the full floral image stencil plus the mask, and then that way you can cover up the stamp and work on the background, or you can use it to color in the full image and it also has the one with the stripes here and then this stencil allows you to color just the flowers and then this last stencil here allows you to color just the leaves now i bought this a couple months ago when it was on sale and i haven't had a chance to use it yet and i thought this would be the perfect occasion i just love giving floral birthday cards so let's get started I'm going to show you how to stamp and use colored ink on dark colored cardstock. So I'm going to start with stenciling and since this stencil is six inches by six inches, I thought it would be best to work with a piece of cardstock that's the same size as the stencil so it would help me to be able to line them up. I'm using a piece of tropical teal cardstock by MFT Stamps and I'll be trimming this down later. I've taped this down using some mint tape to my glass mat. This is a low tack tape and I'm applying some white pigment ink using my domed foam sponge applicator. There's a few parts of the stencil in the center that started coming up while I was doing this, so I would recommend using a pixie spray or some other low tack adhesive to put on the back of the stencil to help hold it in place. So after removing the stencil, I used my heat tool to help dry the ink faster because we want this ink to be completely dry before applying the colors. To test to make sure it's dry, I added some clear embossing powder on top to see if it sticks and it didn't so we're good to take the next step. Now I did take the other stencils and I sprayed the back of those with some pixie spray so I won't have the problem that I had with the first stencil anymore but I still like to use my mint tape just to help hold it in place on my work surface. So here I'm taking some Catherine Puller ink in Be Mine. Now this is a pink color, but because I'm adding it on top of the white, which is on top of teal, it's gonna turn kind of a purplish color. And this time I'm applying the ink with a blending brush, mainly because I wanted to get a light coverage. I tend to get darker coverage when I use the, the sponges. Now after making sure that the pinkish purple whatever color that is was completely dry I applied the leaf stencil and I used the lime Ricky Catherine Puller ink to apply color to the leaves using a smaller blending brush after letting this dry completely I applied some anti-static powder on top of the cardstock and then I took my large stamp and lined it up on top of my stenciled image and placed it in my misty stamping platform and I'm inking up the stamp using some Versamark ink and I just re-inked this ink pad so it's super juicy and I'm using my air hockey table pusher to apply pressure and then I'm going to pour some white embossing powder on top and you will see here I don't know if I applied too much ink because it's super juicy or if I applied too much pressure but when I take all of this off you'll see that uh, that top flower the top two flowers they have a lot of white on there and I don't know exactly what caused it but I'm thinking I probably applied too much pressure or it was just super juicy either way I'm just gonna try to brush off this excess white embossing powder using a paintbrush there is a lot of it so this kind of took me a while I spent longer on this than what I would normally do with anything else but I didn't really 
want to have all that purple co covered up with the white embossing powder and it's actually embossing powders little tiny shavings of plastic so that's why when you apply the heat tool to it it melts it and uh, once it's melted you pretty much it's it's on there so I'm doing my best to get all of it off try different paint brushes but you'll see how I fix this here in a bit So next, I applied my heat tool to melt the white powder. This is my favorite part. And I like to use my reverse tweezers to help me hold whatever it is I'm applying heat to so I don't burn my fingers. And since the big white flower at the top has too much white powder on it now that it's melted, I'm gonna use the stencil again to color and then stamp the two top left flowers so I can place it on top. Luckily, this stamp set has those two flowers separate. So I'm basically going to go through the same steps that I just did, except on this scrap piece of paper, and I'm going to stamp just the two flowers. And uh, this turned out so much better. Now after I get this stamped and embossed, I'm going to take the matching die set and cut this out so that I'll be able to layer this on top of the flowers that are messed up when I go to assemble the card. But before I do that, I decided to take the stripe stencil and add it on top so that I could add some Versamark ink to give it a two-tone teal color. Now I had just re-inked my Versamark ink pad so I didn't want to put all of that excess ink all over my stencil. So I decided to switch to using my embossing ink dauber, and that's by Ranger. But I'm gonna let this completely dry because I'm not adding anything like embossing powder or anything to it. I just want it to be a watermark and it have that two-tone color. And so I cut out the sentiment that says, sending far away birthday hugs from some sentiment strips that I had from Simon Says Stamps. And now because I'm somewhat of, of a perfectionist and I see these little white powder flecks that I didn't brush off earlier, it was really bugging me. So I thought that one way to help mask that would be to add some more shimmery white specks all over. So I took the flower mask part of the stencil and I covered up the flower. And then I took some white linen dilutions shimmer spray and I added some to an acrylic block. And I'm just flicking this on using my paintbrush but I wasn't quite getting the coverage that I was looking for. So I decided to just spray it and boy, did I make a mess. I forgot to get out my splatter box. I didn't think it was gonna go everywhere, but it did. But it did end up turning out really pretty, but I got some on my sentiment strip. So I decided to just go ahead and paint the whole thing and make it shiny. Now I'm just trying to figure out how to trim this down so that it will fit on an A2 size card. Obviously this image is bigger than four and a quarter inches wide and I know I don't want to cut off the section of the flowers in the top left corner where I'll be adding the layer on top. So after going back and forth with this, I just decided to trim off the right side so that the panel measures four inches by five and a quarter. And I'm using a piece of white heavyweight cardstock for my card base and it is side folding so I just scored it at four and a quarter. And then I also cut a layer of plain teal cardstock to be four and an eighth by five and three eighths. And I'm gluing everything down using some Nuvo Deluxe Adhesive. This is my favorite liquid glue because it gives me time to scoot it exactly where I want it. And if, if any seeps out, it dries clear so you don't see it. And then I added some thin or some foam tape to the back of the flowers to give those some dimension. And I have my messy sticky scissors. They barely work for me, but this is what I use them for strictly to cut my foam tape. And then I took the sentiment strip and I applied a thin foam strip to the back of that. And I placed it right below where I popped up the flower. Now to finish off this card, I've had these beautiful two-toned pearl embellishments that I bought from Pink and Main not too long ago, and I haven't had a chance to use them yet. So these here are half teal and half purple, which are perfect for this card. I've placed the smaller ones in the centers of the smaller flowers, 
and then the medium sized ones on the larger flowers and then the largest pearls outside and this finishes off my card i think it turned out really pretty please let me know what you think in the comments below now in order to win a prize from one of our sponsors you must comment on all of the hop videos and you have until november 20th of 2021 to watch and comment and the winners will be chosen randomly so i hope you'll click on the next video in the lineup in the description box Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Have a wonderful day.